Hi, my name is Damon Tai. I'm a naturalist that lives in Oakland, California. I've got a distinct interest in small organisms like slime molds and fungi, and so I'm going to show you guys how to find those in a very urban environment. So right now I'm standing basically in what looks to be like an old carport. There's a bunch of trash back here, but you'll notice over my shoulder, there's a bunch of leaves and other things like that that have accumulated over time. These are a fantastic habitat for finding slime molds and other small fungi. Let's go look. So one of the first things I do when I get to a habitat is I start turning over branches and logs just because they tend to trap moisture for longer periods of time than anything else. And so if I'm gonna find a slime mold or a fungus, it's probably gonna have its best foothold under something like this. So let's see, I'll flip this one over. I can see, oh, there's some actually some interesting growth here. So we've got a really cool slime mold on the back side of this. Um, I'll bust out my macro camera and get a couple better shots of it. Uh, but this is one of the ones they sometimes call pretzel slime molds because they'll kind of grow together in a pretzel-like shape. You can also see there's a number of gilled mushrooms on the back side of this. These are most likely a crepidotus um, fungi. Um, and there's also some really micro micro stuff, this kind of uh, greenish fuzz that you see. And with that, I'd really need a microscope to get a better look at it. Moving on from that log, um, I could dig into the leaf litter a little bit and start to probably find other things. In fact, ooh, right there, there is a mycena mushroom starting to crop out underneath some of this duff. And so duff is a term that's used to describe basically a bunch of leaf litter. And so mycenas tend to be decomposer mushrooms. They have white gills. They're usually relatively small. And you'll find them in habitats like this, in urban habitats, but you'll also find them a lot in natural habitats where there's a lot of leaf litter. Okay, we're gonna pop up from the duff a little bit and go look at some of this other basically trash that showed up here. So we've got a bunch of cardboard. Cardboard is actually a relatively good substrate for a lot of fungi and slime molds will follow them there. And if you look at this block of cardboard, there's a whole bunch of slime molds starting to bud off the edge of it. While I was looking at the cardboard, something caught my eye over here, which is another small mycena. This is a really beautiful orange mycena. Very common leaf litter, but obviously overlooked because it is so small. I'm just going to put my finger in there for scale. You can see that thing is pretty tiny. Some way that logs are good to flip. Um, large stones or rocks are also good to flip. So I'm going to go over here and do my best to flip this with the camera on. Oh, man, the thing's heavy. Um, so, kind of what we'd usually expect to see under something this heavy, we've got, you know, earthworms in there. So, big old worms um, just hanging out. But I'm also seeing something kind of cool over here, which is, you see that we've got what used to be a millipede body there, those little segments. Over here, we can actually see that multi body is growing stuff. Um, and there's another one right over here doing the same. So this is probably one of the parasitic fungi that take down insects. Um, it's uh, sometimes called Bavaria or Bavaria. I, I'm horrible with the Latin on this one. Um, but it's common to find in the Bay Area, especially on insects that are underneath. Uh, stones and logs can get this infection um, and it will it'll take them down. And while flipping this next stone, I found something not fungal, uh, not slime mold, but that a lot of people are interested in. And this is a salamander. This is actually a California slender. And so they call them slender because they're really long and slender. And you can see he's got really, really, really tiny little arms and tiny legs. Uh, these guys are super common in the Bay Area when you turn over rocks and logs and things like that. Uh, really cool little organism. I want to see an organism a little bit closer. There's these really cheap macro lenses that you can pick up lots of places for just a handful of dollars. Um, you know, one to five bucks. I think I've been able to pick this up for for. I'm just going to put this over the top of my cell phone and then we're going to take a look at that salamander. Here it is. Now he's in focus. You can see his little tiny eyes. You can see his little tiny legs. Uh, you can even see the texture of its skin. All right, let's flip another rock. So here's a nice small one, easy for me to manipulate. Oh, check that out. Do you guys see what I just saw there? We've got uh, a millipede. So these guys are really cool. All those little segments, they roll up like that in order to protect themselves. These guys are herbivores. So you don't have to worry about them biting you. 
Uh, some of these guys will actually fluoresce under UV light. Oh, so this is a really cool find. This is one of our UV fluorescent millipedes. So I'm gonna have a black light. I'm gonna turn it on. And you see, it glows really brightly green. These guys are really easy to see at night. Um, you can just walk around with a UV light in most places in Oakland and find these out and about crawling around. I just flipped one of the other blocks in the back here. We got a whole bunch of stuff under here. Here's more of those California slender salamanders hanging out. We also have a bunch of, uh, I think these are probably glass snails, which are very common in the Bay Area. Um, we also have kind of a cool view of what mushrooms look like most of their life. You see that white mat there? That's mycelium. And so that's what the mushrooms are like most of their life. And only at certain points of the year when there's the right conditions, do they pop up and throw up what we call a fruiting body, which we commonly call as a mushroom. And there is another insect being parasitized by a fungus here. So if you look right there, you can see there was a beetle and now there's just fungus growing out from that beetle body. Also under this same stone, I found a former acorn that's rotting, but it has a bunch of hemimycena, these really small mushrooms uh, fruiting on the top side of the old nut. Once I've exhausted kind of the large stuff, the rocks, the logs, um, things like that. I'll move into some of the more kind of twiggy stuff to see what's going on. So if you can find a branch like this a lot of times that's going into the duff. If you pull that back, what that'll do is it'll kind of pull up the duff a bit so you can get a better look at it. And a lot of times there'll be stuff around this. So yeah, actually right here, look at that. That entire oak leaf is just covered in slime molds. I usually don't venture too much riding into trash trash stuff, but I mean, check out this piece of cardboard. You get in here, and there are just slime molds all over it too. Um, more of them. Up oh, on that cluster up here someplace. So these are some of the Arxeria, I believe. Maybe Arxeria cinera. Sweet, there's also a, apparently a cookbook back here. So if anybody wants some uh, really good street eats, uh, I bet you there's some great stuff in here. Let me pull this out and see if we can find any slime molds growing on this, or maybe even some fungal action. Okay, so this is almost too good to be true, per se. But look at this. I open the sucker up and look at this isopod and he's got some sort of fungus growing on him. So cool. Here in some of the other sticks in the area, I found this, which is kind of a cool fungus. It's one of our jelly fungi. This is colloquially known as black witch's butter. Um, that's because there's a bright yellow one that's known as witch's butter, but these are jelly fungi, so they squeeze very easily when you kind of push on them. Uh, these can get much larger, but they're off and on down sticks and logs in the Bay Area. We're back at that abandoned carport that we visited a couple weeks ago to basically to see how things have changed. So let's go look through the debris again and see if there's any new slime molds or small fungi. So the cardboard still looks kind of wet. So that's the first place I'm going to check because moisture is what makes life possible. So if we get in there close, I can start to see, yep, there's a little bit of slime mold on the edge there. And oh, there's some really cool slime molds right there. Those are probably Arxeria cinera. Let's go over to my little macro lens um, and we'll see these guys a little bit closer. So we're zoom in until we can start to see stuff. There it is, there's those slime molds up close and personal. I'm gonna bust up my real camera and get a good shot of that so you guys can see the details of them and then we'll collect them. transfer those to my box here. I'm gonna lay out inside of a little bit of a leaf packaging so that way those guys hopefully will stay together by the time I get home and we can maybe look at them or anything. All right, welcome to my microscope space. We're gonna take one of those slime molds and look at it underneath the scope. So I've pulled it off of the pair of tweezers from that piece of cardboard that we saw earlier. I'm gonna put a drop of water down there and then we'll look through the lens. So now we're looking at the spores from that slime mold under 400X magnification. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit so we can get a little closer. And I've got a scale bar there so that we can tell approximately how big these spores are. So between each one of those little bars is 10 microns. And these spores appear to be just shy of that distance. So they're probably between eight and nine microns. 
The reason I want to know the size of these is the size of the spores varies between different species. So knowing the size can help me understand which species of slime mold this is. Times greater than that first magnification we started with. We can kind of even zoom down a little bit more and wow, we can see all of that amazing texture on those spores. The spores you can also see have a little bit of a wall around the outside of them. That thick wall is used for them so that they don't desiccate as they blow around in the wind and wait to find new places to germinate and start their life cycle all over again. The 1000X also allows us to see that there's tons of texture on those little threads running in between the spores. Those threads are where the spores actually mature from. Really, really cool to see stuff this small. But you don't always need a fancy microscope to see stuff. So let's go look at another way that we could look at some of these micro features with something more accessible have access to a microscope, I want to show you an alternative that can get you in there to look really close at stuff but is much more accessible because these things are, you know, two to five dollars. Um, and the way that they work is there's a small ball lens there that's going to act just like those fancy lenses on the microscope and they're going to allow us to look really close at that slime mold. So let's give this a shot. So here we are looking through the fold scope and we can see all those spores moving around the outside of the slime mold. Um, and you can actually see those spores pretty well. You know, it's comparable to that microscope. It's a little bit more difficult to use, but hey, you can get in there and see stuff. Not bad for, you know, a piece of paper and a ball. So we've got the microscopy measurements now on that slime mold that we found in the carport. So I'm gonna try and look it up and see if we find something uh, that looks like it. So the closest thing, and this is why I thought it was in the field, was Arcsirius cinerea. However, when we look at the size of the spores, it's saying the spores should be 6.5 microns. And the ones we saw underneath the microscope were definitely closer to nine or 10 microns. So I'm gonna have to go looking elsewhere to figure out what this is. So I've gone through the rest of the book and this is still the closest organism to what we have, but it is definitely not it. So Sarah Lloyd, who's readily available on Instagram um, as a slime mold expert, I messaged her and she said, you know what, I'm not 100% sure what that is, but you guys might actually have something new on your hands. And this brings up something really interesting about living in Oakland. There's a lot of organisms that live right around us that still aren't named. So if you're interested in seeing these things, you don't even really need to go to your local park. You can just go to where places where leaves collect, where you find cardboard and moisture. What you really need in order to see these things is patience and a good eye. And that develops over time as you look for things. And soon enough, you'll be seeing the same things that I've showed you in this video.